All right, this podcast is going to go over some of the uh, EIGRP features and configurations you should be aware of if you're using serial links. Uh, basically, I have my network already configured uh, with everything, including EIGRP. Um, if you look, I have a routing table. I'll make sure it works by pinging between my PCs, which I probably should have done before I started recording, but what are you going to do? So this should work. Uh, usually the first one fails in the simulator. And there we go. So the ping's working, which is great. So if we look at the routing table over here, we're going to show IP routes. I have one uh, EIGRP entry of, with these two routes. So basically I have two connections between the two routers and the routing table has a link for both of them. Um, the reason it's showing two uh, routes in there is because it can. Uh, EIGRP supports uh, maximum paths settings to, for the maximum number of equal cost routes it will put in the in the routing table. The default is four, so I have two identical routes. So it's putting them both in there. So traffic could use both of these links at the same time, which makes sense. That's how we want to operate. So a couple things we want to look at with how EIGRP works with regard to serial interfaces. The first we want to look at is the actual serial interface itself and look at a couple settings. EIGRP's metric is based on bandwidth and delay and for serial interfaces it gets those bandwidth and delay settings from the configuration of the serial interface. If we look this says my bandwidth is 1544 uh, which is uh, the speed of a, a T1 line in kilobits per second uh, that's the default setting but if we look at my running config and go down and find the serial serial interface. Uh, the speed of my serial interface is is what's that? 2,000 k. Uh, it's doing two million bits per second, I guess, which would be 2,000 kilobits per second. So my bandwidth setting doesn't match the actual speed of my interface, which can be a problem. And we have no delay setting on here, so we're using the default settings for delay. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually change the bandwidth setting. Uh, of the serial interface uh, so that it's accurate on one of our interfaces and see what that does to our routing table. So in this case we're going to go into serial 010. We're going to set the bandwidth bandwidth and it is set in kilobytes so if we have 2 million for our setting we just drop the last three zeros off that get 2000. So we'll set our bandwidth to 2000. We'll go to the other router and do the same thing on that interface. So now if we look at our serial interface, if we look at our serial interface, our bandwidth setting is correct. Our bandwidth setting is 2000, right? And if we look at what that did to our routing table, we'll see that the other route dropped out, right? The route that we had in there using serial 000 is now gone. And why, why is it now gone? Well, it's gone because we did not change the bandwidth on serial. Uh, I wish I could spell serial. I've been doing that like all day. Serient. Oh, I spelled serial correctly. Awesome. So our 000 interface is still using the default bandwidth. So what we've done essentially is take away half of our capacity for crossing traffic between those two links by changing the bandwidth setting on one interface, but not changing on the other interface. And that's all based on the way EIGRP uses bandwidth and delay to calculate its metric. If we look at... EIGRP topology. If we look at this output of uh, show IP EIGRP topology, we see we have two listings for our network we're trying to get to. One across the one serial link with this value and one across the other serial link with this other value. So this is the um, 
the metric that is calculated uh, based on uh, the 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 way EIGRP calculates its its metric. And since they're not the same anymore, uh, we're only adding one of them to the routing table. So we're going to fix this. We're going to go change the bandwidth on serial zero. 0, 0 to be the proper setting. So am I in there? Yeah, serial 0, 0, 0 bandwidth 2000. Do the same thing on router 2. So now if we look at our routing table, We look at our routing table. Our two right, our two, our two routes are back because they both computed the same metric now. So since the metric is identical, we can now have them both back in our routing table. So that's uh, why it's very important if you have serial interfaces that you set the bandwidth uh, value accurately. If you don't set the bandwidth value accurately, uh, you might not be using the best path. And if you set the bandwidth value on some of your interfaces but not on others, you might be losing part of your capacity by uh, sending traffic, uh, not, not sending traffic over one of those links. So that's uh, how EIGRP can use that metric and how the bandwidth setting will affect that. Another part of the EIGRP metric calculation is delay. You can change the delay on an interface and that will also change the, the metric calculation. So we're going to change the delay on one of these interfaces and see what that does. So what are we, what are we going to change the delay to? Well, let's see what the delay currently is. Currently we have the delay set to 20,000 what are those microseconds? Is that what a U second is? A microsecond? Yeah, I think that is 20,000 20, microseconds. So we're going to change the delay. We're already in the serial interface we want to change. So we're going to type delay. And then the setting for changing um, microseconds is uh, tens of microseconds. So essentially what, what you need to do to figure out what you want to change the delay to is well you probably actually want to figure out what the delay really is in the real world. But what we want to do is we're going to change the delay the least amount possible. So if we need to do tens of microseconds we'll drop this last zero off of, off of the setting that's showing in microseconds and that shows us that we currently have the delay set to 2000 tens of microseconds. So if I want to make this, this, this interface just a little bit slower, I'm going to set it to 2001 tens of microseconds. And I need to go change that on the other router as well. So delay 2001. So now if we look at our routing table, we see that we're back down to one, one route. So we, we change the, the route uh, metric calculation by changing the de delay by one or about 10 microseconds. So 10 microseconds is pretty small, but that small change causes us to lose uh, a path across the network. So that's just how EIGRP works by default. If, if the metric uh, it arrives at is identical to another metric of another uh, possible route, it will use that route. But if it is different, it won't use it. And if we want to see how different is this actually end up making a metric, we can do that show IP EIGRP topology again. And we can say, oh look, our our best route, our successor has 1792256. This other route we have now, it is now 256 higher. So it is it is a slower route than the other one. But you might be thinking, because I'm thinking it, you know, that's kind of close. Can't we still use that route anyway? Uh, why, why is ERGRP being, being so picky? And uh, the answer is yes, we can, we can use that route anyway. We just have to tell EIGRP to use that other route. So the way we do that is by going into the EIGRP config and we set the variance uh, value to 2. With the variance setting of 1, that means that the uh, numbers have to match exactly. If the variance is some number other than 1, then that controls how far apart they can be and the, the, the uh, higher you get with numbers, the farther apart they can be. And it looks like you can go up to 128, but I'm going to go with 2. I'm going to go ahead and do it on, on the other router as well, just for consistency. So now if we come over here and look at our routing table, 
we look at our routing table, both routes are back in there now. And if we look at our metric, our metrics show that they're not the same, but they're close enough, so they're getting added uh, both to the routing table because uh, we changed the variance. So those are some EIGRP related concepts you should be familiar with uh, if you're messing around with serial interfaces. One, the bandwidth uh, setting defaults to T1 speed and you should change that to match what your actual uh, bandwidth is. Um, and if you change the delay, uh, then you might take a serial link out of the rotation that you might actually want to be sending traffic, even if it is a little bit slower. You, you, might, you may still want to, that to be part of the routing table. So just be aware that if you're messing around with a bandwidth and delay and you're using EIGRP, then you might be pulling things out of the routing table that you really want in there. So uh, that's it for now, I guess.